Primo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. South African seed selection for research and development company Sunchem Solaris Crop, a nicotine-free tobacco variety that yields significant amounts of sustainable oil for biojet fuel feedstock, has started taking place locally for the first time since the launch of Project Solaris in 2014. Anine Killian tells us more. Solaris is an Italian crop and up until now all of the seed selection was done in Italy. Sunchem South Africa project manager Samantha Hampton explains that the seed had been selected to get the variety that would produce the best yield. We are starting seed selection for, for Solaris in South Africa. So up until now, I mean the crop is an Italian crop. It was developed sort of 13 years ago in Italy uh, and all of the seed selection each year was done there. You, you select the seed so that you're always getting the best variety to plant. So now, and, and as you do that, it's um, assists in improving the crop for the conditions that the seed is bred under. So it makes sense that bringing the seed selection to South Africa means the crop will become more and more suited to a South African climate. So it'll enable us to have better yields um, and especially our conditions are a lot drier here. So the plant will become more and more adapted to that. But however, tobacco as a plant is quite a, a drought resistant plant. It likes to be on the on the drier side of wet, so it, it, it prefers that sort of environment which makes it useful for, for planting on more marginal soils and in areas where rainfall typically is, is lower. Solaris is the first crop in the region to achieve certification by the Round Table on Sustainable Biomaterials. The international organization sets criteria for sustainable biomass production and conversion and is the best in class in the field, having also received widespread support from the aviation industry. Hampton said that initially, when the project was launched in 2014, Sunchem wanted to prove that it could successfully grow this crop in South Africa as well as process it and fly with it. She noted that the initial objectives had been achieved, but as it is a small-scale project, most of the processing had been outsourced. The result of the first harvest was put towards producing aviation fuel for the first first biofuel flight in Africa, which took place in July in conjunction with South African Airways. In 2014, which is our launch year of Project Solaris, uh, we grew about 50 hectares of the crop. Subsequent year, we also grew about 10 to 20 hectares. Um, and the results of that harvest were put towards producing aviation fuel for the first bio, um, biofuel flight in Africa that happened in July this year with South African Airways. Um, we also produced um, animal feed for testing and some animal feed that we sold into the animal feed market on that project development side. So yeah, quite a successful yeah. Meanwhile, Hampton explained that the long-term goal of Project Solaris is to set up a local biojet fuel refinery in South Africa to enable the full value chain to take place locally as there are no biofuel refineries in the country. She says that there are different ways that scaling up can happen. Given that the crop is mostly a feed crop and the oil is actually just a bonus, Sunken can turn the whole crop into animal feed to increase volumes and reach capacity to fill a local refinery. She added that upscaling would need to happen in an organic fashion, as increasing the property from 50 hectares to 40 hectares a year would not be viable. She further noted that it would also be possible to divert oil to the local biodiesel industry. She said that there isn't a lot of clarity from government regarding a biofuels program in terms of the road transport sector. However, it could be a mechanism to scale up because biodiesel can be made in South Africa today. She added that to grow Project Solaris, a partnership between public and private sector was crucial. Regarding the drought, Hampton noted that last season was tough for many farmers in the area and that a large percentage of farmers' crop yields was lost owing to the ongoing drought currently facing the country. Yeah, last season was a tough season for many farmers in this area. In fact, quite tragic for many farmers. I think about 60% um, of a lot of the farmers' crop yield was lost as a result. Uh, our tob tobacco solaris is quite a hardy crop. So our yields were lower, but our crops survived. So our farmer that we actually worked with had to plough in about 30 hectares of his own maize because of the extreme heat and the drought. Uh, we had a yield, it just wasn't as low, probably about 40 to 50% lower than, than it would be in, in a normal year. Dairy products and juice manufacturer Clover last month launched its 40 million rand visitor center at its Clayville factory in Midrand, the first such center in the South African dairy industry. Anine Killian tells us more. The facility, which took three years to complete, will be open to the public from February 2017. CEO Johan Foster told Engineering News Online that the centre had various benefits. He noted that the benefits of dairy products, especially for children, was a subject the visitor centre dealt with. This visitor centre is actually very unique uh, because it is at the factory, 
I've visited many f uh, visitor centers before and then you don't get a real feel for if you're not in the factory. So the whole idea was to not go in the factory because it takes a lot of effort to, to wash up and so on, but to have a visitor center where you're not in the factory but that you feel part of the factory. So we decided to build this from scratch. It is a quite a big engineering challenge to build all the walkways right into the factories, um, but we've succeeded in doing that. So now you've got a nice overview of the factory um, without having actually to gone into the factory. He added that the center allows guests to experience Clover's milk and beverage bottling and packaging facility through educational tours to groups between 20 and 40 people twice a day, four days a week. Foster stated that the facility was designed with an emphasis on sustainability, reflected by the company's low water and electricity use. We really tried to make it as green as possible. Uh, the, the facility is very light, doesn't need a lot of lighting. Uh, the water usage is quite low, um, natural environment outside. So we really tried to make it as pleasant as possible for people to come and spend uh, a couple of hours with us uh, at this unique visitor centers of Clover. In addition to the visitor center, the complex comprises a manufacturing facility, warehouse facility, and a distribution center. The distribution center supplies all Clover's inland branches and supports the biggest cross dock facility in South Africa with the company's City Deep Hub. We started already in uh, January to 2014, so it took just under three years to complete. Just the visitor center itself cost about 40 million, but the, uh, all the alterations that we've done in, in this whole facility, in this whole uh, factory, cost about 170 million rand in the last four years. So this is really the flagship uh, facility of Clover, um, and we'd really like to bring as many people through this as possible uh, to justify the, the investment. Over 170 million rand was spent on key projects over the past few years, including site infrastructure improvements and new access entrances. The manufacturing facility packs South African fruit mix brand Tropica and Clover Fresh Milk. The Clover Visitor Center will be run by Professor Elaine Flock, who heads up Clover's Corporate Services Division and champions the company's corporate social investment program, the Clover Mama Africa Project. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.